Stuart, first of all, obviously a bit of a debacle yesterday <coughs> about the game. Just how did you see it from your perspective with it being called off the way it was done? Now, listen, it's, uh, it's, it was very simple from my side of things. Um, we do what we always do and we prepare properly to get to a game of football. Um, we left in plenty of time. Um, the roads were horrendous in stages. They were really bad. Um, our driver managed to do uh, amazingly well, I thought, to get us there. And in the time that he did, um, the one thing I'll say is that the contact between both clubs was was crystal clear. Um, and, and by that, I mean that the pitch was fine. Um, there was no issues to the, the stadium or anything like that, Pataudry. Um, and the decision ultimately came, I think, a conversation between the two clubs um, and the police. And that that you know people that were coming after us and leaving later, um, a lot of your staff as it as it were supporters. Um, I know Aberdeen have a, a support from the central belt that travel to all the games and things like that as well. People are finding it nigh on impossible to, to get through some of the roads. So I think at that point, common sense probably prevailed. The most important thing is that people are travelling round about at this time safely. Um, we, we, we certainly don't want any issues that way. Um, so for the for the aspect of us being there and being able to play the game, that was no issue from Aberdeen being prepared to play the game, no issue. It would genuinely come down to that advice, I think, from the police. Round about 3.30, um, and then from there, you know, both clubs do their due diligence to release statements and try and make everybody aware that the game is is postponed. So um, logistically, it becomes a bit of a, a nightmare for us in terms of our travel. We've travelled for no reason. So I think the only thing that maybe comes off the back of it that there was plenty of warnings about that type of storm that was blown in for how long it was going to be here. I think it was probably a bit longer than what was envisaged to, to begin with. Um, so I, I, don't, I don't know if that is one that earlier we, we, we just make that call so that you know we're not sitting up in a, a hotel in Aberdeen um, and that becomes a frustration because there's a lot of travelling in there and a lot of time spent in a bus whereby yeah we would want to play the game that was our first pick hence why we were there of course um, but then it starts to have that wee bit of knock-on effect into this weekend's game but as always we adjust and we make sure that we're, we're as ready as we can be. These types of things tend to happen sort of you know such a congested fixture schedule at this time of the year every single year this does happen when you look at, you know, you mentioned maybe stuff does need to be slightly more in advance. Is that something you'd sort of advocate for? I said, we've all got an opinion on it, and we spoke long and hard because we had so many hours on the bus yesterday, and we've all got our own opinions on it. Um, I could sit here and uh, detail my thoughts on it and how I think that that should look and all the rest of it. It's, it's, it's not going to change anything at this minute in time. The fixtures are released, at, you know, where, where we are just now. There's been quite a few games have been cancelled with storms blowing in so far in the, in the top flight in this country. Um, so again, whether people at the top end of the three in the game decide that that's, that's something that they need to try and look at and somewhere that they need to try and adjust whether the winter break if you call it if, if, if we still have a winter break moving forward does, it, does that come at a different time does that come round about Christmas and New Year all these things I think are on the table um, and we might end up with the same result which is the kind of mapped out season as it sits just now so I'm not going to change the weather um, and as it sits just now I do have an opinion on what I believe that looks like but you know it's it's, it's probably just wasted words at this point but the clubs I can genuinely tell you uh, the first point that I heard that the game was going to be cancelled was at 3.30 yesterday so well, that conversation was had with the hierarchy of our football club in Aberdeen and the, and the, and the police um, I can genuinely tell you that the, the first time I heard about it was at 3.30 yesterday um, and, and from there as I say we do our, our due diligence to make sure as many people as possible you know we, our physio wasn't well yesterday he was travelling up se separately so that he wasn't spreading a bug around about the group and things like that it, it didn't look likely that they were going to be able to get travel north or Kitman was going all across country um, to try and see if they could get there so, there so many issues um, our, our, our media guys here um, were finding it a major challenge to get up north um, so there was there were so many issues for us just with our staff alone um, not least uh, the supporters and everybody else that's trying to make that journey and it probably becomes needless so again the, the time scale of it if you're asking me it would have been great if that was called early in the morning I could have got training session and we are players and we could have done what we had to do um, building up towards Livingston and not travel the I think it was ultimately about four, four and a bit hours it took us to get up to Aberdeen yesterday and then the uh, three and a bit hours that it takes us coming back again Just on the, the game last weekend you know, home against the, the bottom of the league is that the, the type of game that when you're on a run like this 
one that feels like so vital in terms of trying to get those three points? Nah, it's, it's, it's a catchphrase from me. Um, they've all been vital to us. I don't put any more emphasis on this one than I have done any of the other games. I've been asked that question several times. It, it's our job to uh, apply ourselves and prepare and try and execute what we want to do as best we possibly can, whether that's Rangers last week, um, in a televised game or whether it's this Saturday against Livingston there's, you know, we, we treat all those games exactly the same they look different as in you're playing against a different team with different players and a different setup. but in, in terms of our mindset and what we want to achieve and what we want to put into the game it's, it's exactly the same so it's the next one in the list for us um, there's there's obvious talking points there that find ourselves um, second bottom Livingston find themselves uh, bottom of the table but you know I, I don't look upon it any other way um, I don't believe the players do either uh, and from our point of view it's a home game where we find ourselves on a, a poor run we're, we're desperate to win a game of football we're, you know, we're putting in a lot of time and a lot of effort to try and see if we can change our fortunes and come away with a different outcome um, and, and and from that side yeah, that, that's that's about as far as I look you know, I don't look beyond that in any way shape or form I know it's going to be difficult to watch their game um, we've managed to see their game back from last night um, and the one thing that we know is that they're a very resilient team you know that they've, they, they're have they a team that um, have had a lot of players that have been over the course for a, for a number of seasons in this league with Livingston, you know, a lot of people that have got amassed a lot of games with their club, um, and we know that they're going to try and challenge it and tackle it the exact same way that we do. Who has the better quality uh, quality on the day? Who eradicates mistakes? Who's able to find the back of the net? That that's going to be the defining factor. Um, and in the next two days, we have to ensure um, that we set ourselves up the best possible way. I look to try and pick what I think is the eleven that affects the game for the very start, but also how I believe we have an impact later in the game, which has been something for us. Um, but I think it's naturally uh, the, the, the type of thing that can become pivotal in this league. With a break coming up, just how vital do you think it would be if you did manage to get that win in before the break? Again, I go back to my earlier my earlier point. We've we've been desperate for a, a a win a number of weeks back. We've been <coughs> desperate to try and break this cycle. What we have seen is a, is a couple of better performances. You know, I allude to St Johnston, St Mirren, where you feel as if you're getting closer to that victory. And what we have to lean on is kind of getting back to that. I touched on it in the, the weekend past there against Rangers that I was so frustrated with that opening sort of 16, 17 minutes where I feel that we present chances and goals and opportunities to the opposition. Um, so from that side of it, you exclude that as the defining factor in the game but out with that I didn't feel there was a great deal in, in the game uh, necessarily we have a, a decent rally in the second half would like to create more chances um, but in tough conditions I didn't think there was masses between um, the, the two teams on the day we know that there's a lot between the teams in terms of the points and league positions um, but that's the greatest frustration for me is just trying to eradicate those silly errors that, that, that kind of shot us in the foot against Rangers um, but the one thing we know is that Livingston will present their own problems and if we come up with similar answers or similar decision making then you're going to give some good players opportunities um, we have to take that out of your game we have to make sure that we mitigate any risk in, in, in conceding silly goals um, and, and probably try and lean towards the thing that we feel that we've got at times which is a threat in the forward area there's been a lot of speculation regarding Kevin Van Buren. Is that a realistic possibility? Is there anything you can do there? There's absolutely nothing to tell you on it, to be fair. I, I think I've spoke to one or two people here um, and, and they'd alluded to the fact that there was one or two stories that have, that have been out in the press the last couple of days. I, I personally haven't seen them, actually. It was just uh, it was brought to my attention um, and there's nothing to update you on in terms of whether we're looking to bring Kevin into the football club or where he's going. I've seen that it was three or four other clubs linked with him um, as well. So, yeah, nothing to nothing to speak of on that front. Yeah, well, um, the, the way that we've set our stall out just now, there has been a lot of open and honest and clear conversations with myself and, um, and, and the members of the board. So at this stage, we know that we'll probably have that opportunity to bring in maybe one, uh, possibly two. And then I suppose that if that number increases in any way, it could only be by um, one or two players moving on, um, which may free up something else to come in. But I've said all along that uh, we don't sit here with uh, a lot of football players. We don't sit here with a mass of um, bodies sitting in this building. So uh, as much as I could limit players going out the door because I need to see ideally if we can add one or two to what we already have but I mean that in quality but also mean that in numbers just to give us a strength and depth and more options in games and, and to protect and ward against what's been a, a wee bit of a challenge for us in the, in the number of injuries we've faced since the start of the season. Okay, well, 
Saturday. Um, any squad updates? Is anybody coming back? No updates. Um, looks as if we'll have the same group of players, the same squad um, as would have been available for Aberdeen and it was available against Rangers. So, no, on, on, on top of what we already had, there's, there's no change. So you obviously managed to start the game better than on Sunday. That's been a, kind of, a bit of a theme where you, you do seem to rally as the game goes on. How do you kind of approach that when it's such a big game? There's maybe more pressure on this game than, than, than other games just because of the external. Kind of talk about it again if, if, if you really break it down what we're talking about at the start of the game it sounds ridiculous but the first three and a bit minutes or whatever it was of the game I thought we were really fine we sort of played it in Rangers territory um, and, and there was nothing much happening in the game I think the bit that, that obviously we look at is and again, sometimes I make that sound as if it's it's for a full forty five minutes of football. Sometimes it, for, for us over this this period, it's been sporadic moments. It's been um, just individual errors, individual decisions that that, that put us in a uh, in a position where we find ourselves a goal down or two goals down in games. Um, so that idea, and, and this is another thing that I'm big on. You, we we address the problem. You always address the problem. Um, there's, there's mechanisms and methods that we've worked on on and off the pitch to see if we can get a a slightly different outcome and make sure that we're better at the start of a game um, again going into the, the detail and the specifics of them that's you'll forgive me but that's bits that you keep in house of course um, and we try and see if that has an effect but I'm not putting it down to at times full 45 minutes I think um, there, there's, there's been sustained periods but there's also been moments where we've been okay in, in, in a half of football but found ourselves two two goals down um, and from there as I keep speaking about it's a mountain to climb um, I think what we have to do sometimes is not just not not necessarily improve the tactical or the technical element of the game. It's that mental element whereby we understand what the messaging is. Um, you know, I talk about the first goal against Rangers and how frustrated I was and how annoyed I was on that on Sunday. Um, there's a reason for that because we kind of detailed that moment and being in that position and where we felt we should use the ball, especially in the early stages of the game, um, in those conditions. So that's what annoys me. So that comes down to a split second decision. That doesn't necessarily come down to a, a performance for a full half. Um, so that's the that's more the angle, the really specific detailed moments rather than you know try to sustain that and think about what that looks like and training 45 minutes of football to make sure that we can actually get it set better. Um, but again, I go back to it that the players themselves um, acknowledge their errors. I don't I don't I don't go into that dressing room and fight with people to try and make convince them that they've made the mistake or they've made their error. Um, but very very simply, we we know what the elephant in the room is. We know what the situations and the and the scenarios that need to be addressed. That comes down to individuals. That comes down to what is your job. What is you know what is your playbook at this moment in time? And if players can get that right for us, we've shown time and again that we can be a good side and that we can be a team that can get clean sheets, can amass points in this league. If we don't, we make it very difficult for ourselves so um, sometimes I think that just comes down to the individual and the um, the decisions you make and the performance that ultimately can be defined by that that one decision of whether I pass it into one area or whether I play it in another area and that's how we that's how I believe we'll get ourselves out of the position everyone taking accountability for their own job and their own duty within a game and if we get it right then I, I think we can be a, a, a team that's very very competitive if we don't we find it hard like we've seen over over the last stretch.